The NFL Combine is in the books. I assume Xavier Worthy is a third-round pick right now. We're about to find out. We're going to hop in a few big board drafts on underdog fantasy. We're behind the eight ball. Last week, we learned about a lot of rookies. We know about a lot more after this weekend. I'm Pete Overzet. This is Best Ball Breakfast. Let's roll. My slow draft rooms are so much different than my streamed drafts. Does no one realize underdogs half point PPR? Idiots. Damn, bro. You know ball. Hope you guys packed your bags. I packed my bags. No, I mean, I, I literally packed my bags. Dude, Star Method's legit. Only way to max out every contest in the plus EV way. Week 17, you still gotta get there, bro. We have a finite sample. We only have so much samples. Is it negative EV to stream all your drafts? We just don't know. GMs, 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 Donovan coming out hot. Let's get Isaac Guerrendo in the player pool. I did see Isaac ripping up the combine. Isn't there a couple other guys? I, I saw a few other requests from people wanting to get players uh, in the player pool. That's how we know we're sick. We're absolutely sick when you're begging to draft guys and underdog says, no, you literally can't draft them because we didn't know about them when we created our ranks. GM to all of the ladies and fellas. Yes, yes, Tyler. <laughs> Worthy of full 3.19 for Al Davis up in heaven. Yes, Al Davis was rolling around uh, in his grave feeling all kinds of tingly things about Xavier Worthy. Just realized Pete is missing a button on his flower shirt. Holy shit. You are like, you're like my 14th month old April who like will find every little minuscule thing on the ground. Like I'll think I've cleared everything. And then she finds that one little thing. You noticing that that shirt is missing a button. It took me a second to realize what you're talking about in the intro, but you are correct. I do need to get that. Um, what is going on to the chat? Uh, a tight end named Culp isn't there. I'm sorry, guys. We're just going to have to deal with it. We're just going to have to deal with it. It's like, uh, you know, in the crypto space for a while when, uh, it, it used to be a thing where if these coins and stuff, they couldn't, um, agree on like governance or where things were headed, they would just fork the coin. There was the, you know, the Bitcoin classic and the Bitcoin fork was the OG one. It's like, what if we just had a big board fork where we forked off into big board post combine and just severed the contest and we put in these new guys into the player pool? I actually don't think anyone would like that. Um, so scratch that idea. We're not forking the big board. We are going to press onward. We are, as of this morning, looks like 40% filled uh, about to be 40% filled in the big board. And um, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I have only drafted one team since we all congregated here last Monday. And I drafted my first two big board teams. I have a, a self-imposed rule right now where I'm only going to draft on stream or cardio club drafts. Uh, so I did get in a cardio club draft uh, late last week. I'm going to try to get some more cardio club drafts going so I can, you know, supplement my stream drafts, but I have a feeling we'll be ripping uh, more drafts this week on stream. So I will slowly and slowly catch up with you guys. Almost as slow as Troy Franklin. Um, man, what a rough scene for Troy Franklin at the combine. I mean, the 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 comp I saw that people got really bad about was uh, Tyquan Thornton, but now it appears that Troy Franklin is just a slower Tyquan Thornton. So it was like every single goddamn rookie wide receiver crushed the combine except Troy Franklin. Uh, tough scenes all around there. Um, let's do a little bit of housekeeping uh, before we get down to brass tacks. I need some coffee. I'm trying out this new thing. I'm doing less coffee these days because what I noticed is, especially on stream days when I was doing the coffee, I'd start drinking coffee, you know, 6.30, 7 a.m., whenever I'm up. And then I would just drink all the way through the morning and then showtime would roll around and I'd need a fresh batch of coffee for the show. Next thing you know, I, I think I had like eight cups of coffee. So my new thing is uh, this is my first cup of coffee here on stream. So you guys get to witness that. Here we go. Nice, solid pour here in the morning. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't, I thought, I thought copper, uh, see copper is, um, he's a liar is what he is. I thought I saw a tweet from you copper that you were 150, uh, big boards deep 
Um, but it's similar to your Calvin Ridley exposure. You're fooling us, lying to us. You are an unreliable narrator. Hmm. Uh, all right. Um, let's, uh, let's see here. What else were we going, uh, to do here? We got, uh, a bunch of you watching live. If you guys are new to the channel, I will be here every Monday morning, uh, until probably the end of the Super Bowl. Uh, that now that we're rolling again, we got best ball breakfast back. Uh, we'll have some announcements in the coming months and stuff about various programming and all of that good stuff. Uh, and then in season, it just morphs into the portfolio review on Monday. So other than that little lull, uh, this Monday time slot is back and better than ever. And um, other than that, uh, I believe we are um, have all of our uh, our ducks in a row now. And I uh, I'm trying to tip off the Discord that I'm hopping in a draft, and I couldn't remember which tag we used to use do for there and now this absolutely snap filled so uh we will continue to work on tipping you guys off um but you guys are very fast so this is my what is this this is my fourth big board draft it's my fourth big board draft let's put it on the on the ticker here we drew the one five and we will be off to the races here in the big board Hmm. Let's see here. Hide that. Okay, there we go. We'll we'll save the ducks for the for the second draft. Hmm. You're a YouTube member for uh for the uh the after dark shows. Check out the uh the show I did with JJ. Zacharyson, aka late round quarterback. That was on Saturday night. Had a very fun conversation with him. Uh, JJ and I are both the same age. So we did some, you know, early to mid 90s nostalgia talk, uh, talked about dad life, uh, content creation. We talked about the uh the big um controversy from the the fantasy guy who asked Caleb Williams the question, are you ready to compete? We dug into that, told some Davis Maddox stories had a grand old time, talk some dynasty football um, and some exciting upcoming plans for JJ and content. So if you guys are YouTube members and you want to check that out, you become a best ball value hound on the channel. And then you can get access to all of those after dark streams. I just selected Jamar Chase at 105. This draft started, uh, I think pretty similarly to how most of these have been going as far as ADP, CMC 101, CeeDee Lamb 102, Tyree Kill 13, Justin Jefferson 14, Jamar Chase 15, and then Amon Ra and Brees Hall come off the board. And I think as we kind of talked about last week, that to me is kind of the clear top seven uh, there. You know, obviously Bijan, Puka, Gibbs, still uh, very fun clicks there in the back end of round one, but feels like a tear gap there after seven. I, yeah, we did talk about Reddit uh, with JJ. I have not looked myself up on Reddit yet. I forgot to do that. Hmm. Yes, this is uh this is a little of the alpha leak here from uh, from Brandon. JJ is going to be getting in the best ball streets a bit more this year, which is very exciting stuff for all of us. Yeah, so it will be interesting. Have you guys? Uh, have any of you done uh, drafts um, post combine? So I guess this would be Sunday, uh, anytime yesterday or this morning. And have you seen any big ADP movements? Um, let me know in the comments or in the chat here uh, what things I should be looking out for. Who are the guys that are spiking? Are any is anyone falling? Yeah, we had the, I mean, there were so many wide receivers who impressed, right? You had the two Texas wide receivers, Xavier Worthy, um, and it will probably get um, underreported in that because of his 40 times stole all the limelight, had very good jumps as well. His vertical leap broad jump were really good. He still weighs like a buck 60 soaking wet. So that will, of course, be the riddle, but feels like he firmly kind of cemented himself as a first round pick with that. Um, 
You, of course, had his teammate, A.D. Mitchell, had an awesome combine as well. Ran, what, a 4'3", 540 at 6'2", 205 pounds. We got, yeah, GA referencing Brian Thomas, who destroyed 6'3", 200 pounds, ran a 4'3", um, I was reading over on Rotoviz, uh, Blair Andrews updated his freak score article, which is, you know, kind of their size, speed adjusted metric for just evaluating the relative athleticism of wide receivers. Of course, the Mount Rushmore of the freak score. You got your Calvin Johnson, your Julio Jones, your DK Metcalf. Um, and Brian Robinson, uh, not Brian Robinson, Brian Thomas uh, was leading the class in freak score. Still not close to like the DK Metcalf, like the uber, uber uh, elite freak scores. Um, but this class in general has so many athletes. Uh, they graded out collectively as one of the best like freak score classes. Uh, I recommend checking that out over on Rotoviz. Blair Andrews has been doing some great early combine and prospect work. Um, I'm picking here at pick 20. Uh, I do not have a share of DJ Moore yet. Um, I am happy to select DJ Moore here at pick 20, ADP of 16.3. Can I get a little, just like the um, the, the mildest of Awu's? Awu. 3.7 picks of ADP value on DJ Moore here this morning. What is up, JM? Always bringing the positivity, getting my weekend update highlight from the weekend. Yeah, Lauren and I got to do uh, like a date night slash afternoon. Uh, and we went and we found like one of the few theaters around us that was still showing Oppenheimer. We had not seen Oppenheimer yet. We watched Killers of the Flower Moon in like five different chunks uh, over the course uh, of a week. But we wanted to go watch Opp Oppenheimer in one sitting. Very much enjoyed that. Um, and then we went out for dinner after that. So that was a, a very lovely evening. I, we also watched uh, Past Lives, another Oscar-nominated Best Picture. Um, just a phenomenal movie. Uh, very, very well done. It's, I believe, a debut from uh, a Korean playwright. And it's, you know, like kind of rom com -y, but not really. It's a, it's a slower-paced movie that spans multiple decades. And it's just really, really well done. Um, I think my favorite movie of the year, and that is after watching Oppenheimer, which was, was fa fabulous. I, I very much enjoyed it, but man, past lives is the movie I keep thinking about. So yeah, got to watch a couple movies, go out to dinner, a grand old time. All right. We are sitting here in the third round, a couple quarterbacks at the top of the queue. You know, I am gonna, I'm going to take the quarterback plunge here and I'll explain why. So the three drafts I've done so far. Um, I guess one of them I did go with kind of two mid QBs. I did a Joe Burrow, Kyler Murray build on stream, but I've been finding myself getting shut out at, uh, at quarterback or running back. And, you know, one of the nice things that I think this is a, this is the dynamic that I've realized, and I'll try to kind of talk this through, um, zero RB is so dominant in these early big board drafts, right? We don't have to deal with all of the uncertainty, the, the projectable volume uncertainty of the running backs. And so loading up on these wide receivers, you look at the ADP, you look at the ranks, it's funneling you to wide receivers. And yet we are getting such a large influx of wide receiver talent via these rookie wide receivers that you want to keep some roster spots in your back pocket in the middle and, and the end of the draft to select wide receivers. So if you just rip five to six straight wide receivers, it's really hard to allocate more capital to the wide receiver position late. So what I had noticed is I was probably going a little too hard at wide receiver as I am wont to do. And then finding myself kind of scrambling at either running back or one of the onesie positions and quarterback in general. And I, I've seen some of you guys tilting this in the discord too. Like you'll get sniped by the unstacked um, QB hoarders, all of that stuff. And so I want to mix up my build here. You get nine picks of ADP value on Josh Allen and see if this gives me a little bit more, uh, flexibility here. I can also start to think through some other stacking considerations. I probably will not take Joe Burrow unless he really falls just because I already spent this early pick on Josh Allen. But if I want to try to connect the dots, do maybe a Caleb Williams with DJ Moore, I think that might make sense. But this is me uh, trying to get my footing in these uh, drafts here. And I've just found if I go too hard at wide receiver early, I kind of block myself out of 
flexibility later, which is kind of always been the case. If you do any um, position hard, like if you go double early QB, it's like, well, what if a quarterback falls 40 picks past ADP? You can't scoop up that ADP value relative to the construction and how you've allocated your draft capital. So I think you always um, want to give yourself a little bit of that optionality. And I found as much as I like the zero RB starts in here, I want to keep some bullets in the chamber for running backs later. But it looks like we got some more sliding players here. Um, Amari Cooper goes. Um, let's see. So we got James Cook at the top. Maybe I will do that. Maybe I will also grab my running back here. And we'll try to piece together wide receiver a little bit more throughout as opposed to just hammering it early. Let's let's make a bet. Let's make a bet on this Bills offense. A um, little outside my comfort zone, but we'll add James Cook. So we got Josh Allen and James Cook here. James Cook took him right at ADP. Josh Allen, a little bit of ADP value there. Pick 29 relative to his ADP of 20. And then we got our two wide receivers, Jamar Chase and DJ Moore. So we're starting with a bit more of a balanced build here. And we'll see if this gives us a little bit more optionality to scoop up value in the mid rounds, Josh Allen, James cook, Jamar chase, and DJ Moore for the audio listeners through four rounds. All right. Yeah. Where, where has Xavier worthy been going in these drafts? When was the last time the ultra fast combine wide receiver worked out? Yeah. I mean, you can go and look at, um, you know, the record I, I post, I embedded the, uh, the Schefter tweet for the, the fastest 40 times in combine history here in today's fantasy life newsletter. You can always subscribe to that for free on fantasylife.com. Xavier worthy, four, two, one, John Ross, four, two, two, Kalen Barnes, four, two, three, Chris Johnson, four, two, four. There you go. Copper. There's one that worked out. Tariq Woolen, Dree Archer, Marquise Goodwin, Henry Ruggs, Stanford root or route. Um, we are on the clock though. We need to go pick. Um, let's do here. Let's do Terry McLaurin. Um, I have not selected Terry McLaurin in one of these drafts yet. Um, I like Terry should have a quarterback upgrade. We would think this year. Um, and you know, he, his value is probably, you know, people are thinking my guess of this commander's offense is like a very spread out offense just because that's the way Sam Howell ran it. But uh, guess what? There's no more Logan Thomas. He was cut. Rest in peace. Many are wondering if it's Cole Turner season. And uh, maybe Curtis Samuel doesn't, you know, hog all of the the targets over the middle this year. And Terry, Terry McLaurin returns to his rightful status as an alpha or at least an alpha adjacent wide receiver one in that offense. Oh yeah. People are very excited about lad McSlappy. Our generation's Hunter Renfro is what I've been told. Hmm. Bindle's noticing some wide receiver ADP value in a Pete draft. Are pigs flying? Maybe do, do people have the same thesis as myself? Are we going to all play a game of chicken with these steamy post combine rookie wide receivers? Mm. Look at that. I mean, it, this is, this is what's so sick about being a zero RB bro. You go three wide receivers through five rounds you take one modified anchor in round four, and next thing you know, you are getting attacked as a late round wide receiver, bro. You guys have already jumped the shark. This is a fun and very tilting question from Donovan. Where would JSN go in this class? I don't know. He'd probably be he'd probably be the fourth wide receiver off the board, right? You'd have Marvin Harrison, you'd have neighbors, you'd have a Dunze. And then JSN would be my guess, right? As far as just draft capital. Hmm. I'm I'm we're all tilted. That that's actually what the entire fantasy football and in, industrial complex is meant to do, is just tilt us at various times. GM Andy.
We got Chris G. What do we got Chris doing here? Ooh, Chris going Gibbs, Kyron, Jalen Hurts, Cooper Cup, Calvin Ridley, Brian Thomas. Wow. Look at Chris. Double anchor RB, elite QB, vacuuming up all the old dusty wide receivers. Oh, God damn it. I have to select Dalton Kincaid. I have to select him, right? If I take Josh Allen at pick 29, and then there's a Dalton Kincaid at the top of the ranks, two picks of ADP value, man, man. This is what this is what I've re I've become a guy. Am I Liam? Hey guys, this isn't this isn't best ball breakfast anymore. This is now chaos surfing, hosted by Liam Murphy, aka Chess Liam. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I uh, I'm gonna be spinning up a chess channel soon. I promise. I mean, one of these days, I am gonna get my chess channel up. But yeah. Uh, started with three bills through six rounds. Sue me. They're all undervalued by four rounds each. Someone in the chat saying, how could Josh Allen taken in the third round be undervalued by four rounds? Yes. He he is a negative first round pick. Josh Allen should come preloaded on everyone's teams. Oh, man. What what's the uh what's the Dawson Knox contract? Is 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 Dawson Knox for sure on the week one roster for the Buffalo Bills? Well, one of you contract bros, let me know. Is there any glimmer of hope? <laughs> I would the funny thing is, is someone says in the chat, Liam took Allen 101 in a big board. And I don't know if that's a joke or not. That is a testament to Liam's brand that I do not know if that's a joke or not. All right, we are going to have to load up on on mid to late round wide receivers because we're getting we're getting wiped out here. Brock Bowers goes. Um, I think I wanted a mulligan. It was last week on Best Ball Breakfast. I'm on the clock here in the mid of middle of the seventh round. I asked the chat: Jalen Warren or Brian Robinson. And I think, I think it was producer Phil got beat everyone to the punch and said, Brian Robinson. And then a ton of Jalen Warren votes came in after the fact. This time we will, we'll rectify that. ADP is a social construct. I don't care if I'm picking at 77. We are taking Jalen Warren, what, 17 spots ahead of ADP. I read this article on Legendary Upside. Pat had a big old boner for Jalen Warren. And now I have to take him. All right, our team through seven rounds. We might get buried by an avalanche. We only have three wide receivers through seven rounds. That's a no-no. We got we got a we got a Bill stack with Josh Allen, James Cook, and Dalton Kincaid, our other running back, Jalen Warren. We just selected three wide receivers, Jamar Chase, DJ Moore and Terry McLaurin. I hope I survive this. I hope I survive. Are they, is that what they're calling him, Bindles? Big Cock Browers? You know, when I go to upload these podcasts to Anchor, they ask me if there was anything explicit. And I always, I always have that moment where I try to think back on the show and I'll generally be like, yeah, I had an F-bomb here. Just in case someone's listening to Best Ball Breakfast in the car with their young ones, an impressionable four-year-old, I will go ahead and slap the explicit tag on there. But every once in a while, I'll try to be like, I think I kept that one pretty clean. I don't think I need to click the explicit tag on this podcast upload. But now I have to because I said Big Cock Browers. Big cock Brock. This is getting the explicit tag. This show is not safe to listen to with your little ones nearby because you never know when the host might pull up a chat and say, Big cock Brock. I apologize. All right. What are we going to do here in the eighth round? 
It's just all it is is running backs. The grossest of running backs. Oh, man, this, this is a real nasty spot, isn't it? This is a real nasty spot. Part of me just wants to take A.D. Mitchell. Part of me just wants to YOLO rip it in on A.D. Mitchell and just prove that I watched the combine. Should we just live a little? Let's just talk this out. Let's just talk this out. I'm, I'm ripping it in on A.D. Mitchell at pick 92. If A.D. Mitchell goes in the first round, which it seems like he is, I saw, I think it was Jordan Reed reported that the his uh, first likely, or not likely, but the he could go as early as pick 15 overall to the Indianapolis Colts, A.D. Mitchell. I will tell you right now, if A.D. Mitchell goes 15th overall to the Indianapolis Colts, he will be going earlier than pick 92 in drafts. I just scrolled down and lived a little. I did it. We did it. I think if you think through, so like Zay Flowers ADP is kind of a good barometer to kind of think through for these rookies. And then you have to add 2024 inflation onto it. And we are seeing massive inflation relative to these rookie wide receivers. Should we scroll down again? We're on the clock in the ninth. Who should we take? Man, or do we just scoop up the Brian Robinson value this late? Ugh. We could do, mm. I was thinking about that. You want me to do it? Should we do Benson? Uh, 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 oh, I did Brooks. I was trying to click a rookie as fast as I could uh, and end up doing Brooks instead of Benson. My bad. Welcome back, American man. This round is tough. Probably got to reach here. We did reach. I, I was actually trying to find Benson, but I was not quick enough and grab Jonathan Brooks instead. At least we stayed on the rookie path. b Spurf says this room is wild. I'm feeling wild. Copper says, I feel social pressure to reach now that Brick started a smear campaign on Nets. Yeah, Davis caught the biggest stray. I am working on a video this week um, to manifest what Brick said would happen. And he said that I was going to make a video this year about scrolling down as it pertains to season-long best ball drafts, and he thought that would be the current meta. I, uh, I have not weighed in on the thoughts that Davis and Brick had on that fake lulls episode because I'm making a video about it on the Deposit Kingdom channel. No promises if it's going to be out this week. Um, I keep finding different things I want to investigate, trying to round up some additional data. But keep an eye out for that video. I uh, mentioned this last time. Um, it's youtube.com slash Deposit Kingdom, I believe. But I'm going to have a video about scrolling down. Uh, geez, I can't even pull up my own YouTube channel successfully. Here we go. This channel, this is where I'm going to be making more videos this year. Uh, it is for non-live streams, but I'm working on the scroll down video. I'm going to talk about it initially through the lens of Battle Royales dailies. That's where people are more familiar with it. That's where the Badge Bros popularized it. But now I kind of want to dive into Brick's thesis of how applicable it is to season long drafts and whether it is a strategy that we can reliably practice in these 18 round, 20 round best ball drafts and have been looking at the data. And I think there's some fun things to consider. And I like that uh, Brick got us rolling on this. So subscribe to that Deposit Kingdom channel and uh, I will have a new video out there soon. And then lots more subsequent videos as the off season progresses. All right, um, let's do this. 
why we're living a little, I had mentioned, let's get the Caleb Williams to DJ Moore stack, right? Caleb Williams, I'm right at ADP. His ADP is 113. We're picking in the middle of the 10th round here at pick 116. We spent our second round pick on DJ Moore. Let's lock that up. Let's have some fun. But let me, you know what? I meant to ask, I meant to ask Caleb Williams a question before he joined my team. I should, you know, Caleb, I need to ask you a question. I know I just selected you, but I need to know before I put a ring on it. Are you ready to compete, son? Are you ready to compete? I'm getting a little worried that you're not ready to compete, Caleb. Why aren't you doing the medicals at the combine, Caleb? Are you ready to compete, son? Please go viral on Twitter. Are you ready to compete, son? Caleb! Will you deliver me to the promised land in week 17? Are you ready to compete in week 17, Caleb? Caleb, are you ready to paint your fingernails before the week 17 games? All right. We're about to pick in the 11th, and then we'll recap this team. Um, Man. Cortland Sutton, is this enough? Is this enough value on Cortland Sutton? Hmm. I feel like we've had a lot of fun. We've lived a lot. We've taken Jonathan Brooks, A.D. Mitchell, Caleb Williams. It's time to eat our vegetables. It's time to eat our vegetables and select Cortland Sutton. No one likes it. It's like when my 14th month old April gave her a uh, carrot or mushroom. She puts it in her mouth. She swishes it around and she says, nah, I'm not about this and spits it out. Unfortunately, I can't spit out Cortland Sutton. I just selected him. Sometimes I like to live a little. Sometimes I like to, oh, I have zero takes on Cortland Sutton at this time. Do not ask me for my official take on Cortland Sutton. I do not have one at this time. Here's my team. It's a two, three, five, one through 11 rounds quarterback. Josh Allen and Caleb, are you afraid to compete Williams? Three running backs, James Cook, Jalen Warren, and Jonathan Brooks. Wide receiver, Jamar Chase, DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin, A.D. Mitchell, Cortland Sutton, tight end, Dalton Kincaid. Where did our guy Xavier Worthy go? Xavier Worthy, here's Xavier Worthy watch. We glossed over this. Went at pick 104 to Jimbo. Ninth round pick. I, I was thinking through some of this stuff, like as it pertains to the combine. And I think there's a natural, you know, inclination to be like, don't, don't double count the combine stuff, which I kind of get to an extent. However, what you're not double counting is how it's actually affecting their draft position, which we know is very indicative of year one opportunities and Xavier worthy Whatever warts he has in his profile, however small and minuscule he is, he is going to go higher in the NFL draft. He is going to go higher than where he was previous to the combine, which means he is going to get more opportunities earlier than he was. That's just how draft capital works. So when we think through that lens in where first round wide receivers have traditionally gone on underdog, I don't think that's absurd. I don't think a mid ninth round tag on a guy who just ran a 4 2 one and who's probably going to go mid to late round one, I don't think that's insane. He goes around Deontay Johnson. Who knows what's going on with Mike Williams, Dontavian Wicks, other rookies. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. How about this? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? We are on the clock here. Hmm. You know who I've been wanting to get a share of? I wanted a share of Jalil McLaughlin. We're, we're going to build out our bet on Denver. Whatever, whatever Sean Payton's going to end up doing at quarterback, it's going to involve Cortland Sutton and Jaleel McLaughlin being great again. So we have four running backs now, five wide receivers. It had crossed my mind for a second to do 
Jahan Dotson, um, just because I had already selected Terry McLaurin. But, man, Jahan Dotson's a tough click. So here we go for rookie wide receiver watch. I mentioned the Xavier Worthy at 104. Keon, uh, Keon Coleman goes 108. Roman Wilson goes 120. Xavier Leggett, or is it Leggetti? It's a Xavier Leggetti. He goes at uh, pick 121. What other what other rookie wide receivers who should be on my radar are still on the board? Who should I scroll down for? Holy shit. Lad McConkey went 96. Have we jumped the shark there? Is that the one that's absurd, Lad? Lad going at 96. I think that's jumping the shark. I'm all about having a good time on a Monday morning after the combine. But I'm Lad McConkey at oh God, pick 96. What is his ADP? What is Lad's ADP? His ADP is 131. Okay. DW absolutely living a lot. Living a lot with that selection. Oh, yeah. Pure Saul. That sounds fun. That sounds fun. I can't select Khalil Herbert again. Ricky. Icky sticky Ricky. I'm a combine bro now, guys. What, do you want me to take Adam Thielen? <laughs> you want me to take DeMario Pop Douglas? <laughs> you want me to take Joshua Palmer? <laughs> no, Ricky Pearsall. Hat tip to the chat. Let's pour some goddamn coffee. We're having a blast. Xavier Leggett's already gone. Long gone. Sorry, Tyler, you can take the McCaffrey brother. Sorry, buddy, you're going to you're going to get called whatever I call you. And I'm telling you right now, you are out of pocket on that Lad McConkey pick. Hmm. All right, we are drafting some rookies. All right, how many rookies do we got on this team? One, Caleb Williams. Two, Jonathan Brooks. Three, A.D. Mitchell. Four, Ricky Pearsall. Okay, just four. But it feels like a lot. We got a 2-4-6-1 build. Uh, I think this is just going to be a two-quarterback room for sure. Um. I guess this, this is probably going to end up being a three-tight end room. I don't really see any tight ends on the board who can round this out as a two tight end room. And then we'll just keep selecting non quarterbacks from here on out. Hmm. We, I think we have showed the full range of drafting options. We've reached and lived a little. We've scooped up ADP values. We've leaned on Pat's leg up rankings. We crowdsourced a rookie wide receiver pick from the chat. Basically, every type of thing you can do when making a, a, a big board selection, I have utilized it. I have so many weapons at my disposal, and we are just wielding them like a Swiss army knife in this draft. Who the hell is clicking Adam Thielen? What, I mean, with all due respect to Pat, like, what are we doing with this ranking, bud? Is this guy drinking from the fountain of youth this offseason? If you loved Adam Thielen's production at the end of 2023, you're going to love it in 2024. I'm unhinged. Devontae Walker, come on down. Boom. Boom. Get younger. This team needed to get younger fast. Mm -mm. Every once in a while, you got to IKB. That's another tool in the drafter's tool belt. Sometimes you IKB it. Pat's asleep at the wheel with some of these ranks. Pat, Pat got to, to this rank and then started phoning it in. 
We're going to have to find a goddamn tight end, though. I mean, it is. It's not looking good out there, guys. The tight end landscape has evaporated. You know who I'm going to take? God damn it, I was going to take Isaiah Likely. And I got sniped. Am I going to take Darren Waller? Am I going to, do I have so little self-respect that I'm going to take Darren Waller? Look at this room. We are all playing a game of chicken with Adam Thielen. We are going to collectively railroad Pat Corain into lowering this Adam Thielen ranking because Pat's going to say, well, we're baking an ADP, so we're kind of in line with ADP. We will shift the ADP until you shift that ranking, Pat. Taking Darren Waller. And I, I, do, I don't want to hear any comments about it. I appreciate your guys' engagement. I appreciate your guys' contributions to the stream. I want to hear nothing about that Darren Waller selection. Let's pretend like it never happened. Let's move on. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me who's going to be throwing him balls. Don't ask me if he's going to ever stay healthy. Don't ask me if he's not about to fall off the age cliff. Do not ask me any of those things. We are moving on. We are moving on to round 16. Here's the team through 15 rounds. Five more picks to go in big board draft number four here on the Peter Overzet YouTube channel. Subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends we're out here building beautiful big board teams. Quarterback Josh Allen and Caleb Williams. Four running backs, James Cook, Jalen Warren, Jonathan Brooks, and Jaleel McLaughlin. Wide receivers, baby. Jamar Chase, DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin, A.D. Mitchell, Cortland Sutton, Ricky Pearsall, and Devontae Walker. Tight ends, Dalton Kincaid, and the man who shall not be named. I said we are not talking about it, Nova. What about not talking about that tight end selection? Do you not understand? Do you know who else retired and then came back? Rob Gronkowski. Put that in your smart-ass pipe and smoke it. Mm. Mark, I know you feel like you found a workaround. In your head, you said, if I send Peter a super chat, he will be forced to talk about the subject he just said he would not talk about. But you are wrong, Mark. We're not talking about it. Man, you guys see that report from the Ravens about Rashad Bateman? Sure is tantalizing. Dylan goddamn Loeb just staring at me. Let's do, let's do Izzy. I still really like Izzy as a handcuff. What other, what other rookie running backs do I need to select? Do I need to do Dylan Loeb? Did you guys see the follow-up on Dylan Loeb? Did you guys see this? So, as you guys know, last week I discovered that Dylan um, was, how do I put this, a scrawny white boy. But then new information was brought to my attention. And that was Dylan Loeb doing this. I don't know what we call that. This, this, it's an explicit stream now. Does that mean he's now a better pick? After Dylan Loeb did this at the Combine, I believe this writer is calling it the crotch chop. Is the stock up or down? The suck it, the DX, yes. Is Dylan Loeb more draftable after doing the crotch chop? My column. Jason says the chop moved him up 20 spots. Hmm. Dylan saw my short last week. He saw me questioning how much dog he has in him. And he quite literally said, suck it, Peter. Touche, Dylan. Touche. Touche, brother. 17, 18, 19, 24 more picks. 
You guys got any thoughts about this Jermaine Burton guy? You know who I actually like here for wide receiver? I don't mind Jalen Hyatt. Jalen Hyatt, to me, feels like a better and best ball guy. And guess what? Jalen Hyatt's target share, when that veteran tight end retires, All right, we should we should uh we should start drafting more running backs. Okay. Chipsy says just click button. What the fuck do you think we're doing right now, Chipsy? What in God's green earth do you think we're doing right now? This is my fourth draft of the year. I learned about 75% of these rookies yesterday. What do you want me to do? I am clicking buttons. I just, I just love, you know, you know, Levitan always talks about living in a simulation. We, we, I know we're living in a simulation where we're, when we're talking about a running back who you can't even draft right now on underdog fantasy or Rendo, a, a year five RB, a five year RB with health issues, many years, tough to know he was going to crush the combine. We live in a simulation. <sighs> Should I join the J.J. McCarthy discourse by taking him as my my QB3? Peter has logged into the J.J. McCarthy discourse. Is this true? Is that what's happening, taking Pete Guerrero as thinking it's the other guy? Oh, no. Who is, have we looked up this guy? Have we looked up this guy? Man, that's a tough scene for people. Whatever. Oh wow. Okay. So people th people are getting rugged. They think they're getting the guy who had one of the all time. Let's pull up the uh, Guerrero um, Raz score here. Running back prospect in the 2024 class, Isaac Guerrendo, scored an unofficial 9.99 at a possible 10. This ranks second out of 1,765 qualified running backs from 1987, the year I was born, mind you. As ESPN reported, I am 36 years old. Let me make this pick, and then we'll go back to Guerrendo. Let's do – um. I, I've seen I've seen some of the sharps on the, uh, the Noah Fant. Or do we just rip it in on two Bills tight ends now? We've made too big of a bet on Dalton Kincaid. We're going to go Noah fan. Now, let me get back to the uh, the Isaac Guerrendo Raz. Look at this. Comes in at 6 feet, 221, 41.5 vertical leap, 10 foot, 9 inch, broad jump, putting it in elite. 4-3-3-40 at 9.95. 9.99 overall RAS score. This guy sounds great. You know what? I'm going to go draft him. How do I spell his name? It's Isaac Orendo. Okay, here we go. Isaac, no. There's an Isaac Nauta, an Isaac Whitney. Hmm. Maybe if I do his last name instead. Warendo. Let me find him in here. Hmm. G U E R P. Hmm. Seems close enough. I guess we'll take this guy. Is that is that how it happens? <laughs> Thank you, Jim Money. Thank you. <sighs> um. All right. We have two more picks here. One of them certainly going to be a running back. It, it, maybe I just make Dylan, Dylan part of my brand. I dare someone to snipe me on on my guy Dylan Loeb. Do it, B Spurf. Take him. Someone take Dylan so I don't. Wow, he goes McCaffrey. Whew. 
Welcome to the squad, Dylan. Welcome to the squad. I've done a complete 180 on this guy. Complete 180. Ever since I saw that crotch chop, I've fallen in love with Dylan Loeb. Is it Loeb or Lob? I should probably learn this if he's going to become my favorite running back selection. Oh, yeah. We got another Penn State athlete who tore up the combine. Theo Johnson. Has, has someone drafted Theo yet? Nope. What is Theo? Is he our generation's Darnell Washington? Remember, you guys, it was last year at this time, Darnell Washington shredded the combine, and then there was that video of him pushing like one of the sled things where he was basically just tossing around this big sled like a rag doll. We all fell in love with Darnell Washington. Fortunately, he just got the offensive coordinator to unlock him. Oh, yeah, I completely forgot about hashtag Benson last week. We were we were ahead of it, right? We had hashtag Benson for our giveaway, and then Benson shredded the combine. All right, final pick here. Final pick. We're at a we're at a two six eight three. This could. I'm gonna I'm gonna crowdsource this pick. Is this a seventh running back, or do we grab Dawson Knox as part of some disgusting Bills Voltron selection? Don't just stop. Stop. Are there any running backs we like here? Does anyone know anything about Dylan Johnson? I just selected Dylan Johnson. Let's learn who Dylan Johnson is. This is where I'm going to get the comments like, congratulations, Peter. You just drafted a running back who's not going to get drafted. Oh, here we go. Went to University of Washington. I will ask Ben Gretsch about this young man. This guy's a winner. Made it all the way to the national championship game. Let's see if anyone on Twitter has anything nice to say about Dylan Johnson from over the weekend. Oh, no. He ran a 4.68 in his first 40. Oh, no. I'm faster than Dylan Johnson. What have I done? What a great attitude and smile by Dylan Johnson. Okay, well, unfortunately, big dog energy. Great attitude and smiles don't translate to fantasy points. Austin Abbott's talking me off the ledge. 159 yards, two TDs versus Oregon. Oh, no. What have I done? What have I done? All right, this is my fourth draft. Let's recap this one here. Fourth draft. The date is 3 4. Best ball breakfast. 2 7 8 3. Bills. Here's the team. Here's the team. Everyone quiet. I'm going to recap the team. Everyone be quiet. Shh. Josh Allen and Caleb Williams at quarterback. This room might be afraid to compete. We have seven running backs, James Cook, Jalen Warren, Jonathan should have been Trey Benson, Brooks, Jaleel McLaughlin, Izzy Abandikanda, Crotch Chop, Dylan Loeb, and I ran a 4-6-8-40 Dylan Johnson. Wide receiver, Jamar Chase, DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin, A.D. Mitchell, Cortland Sutton, Ricky Pearsall, need to Google who Devontae Walker is, and Jalen Hyatt, three tight ends, Dalton Kincaid redacted, and Noah Fant. Comments? Concerns, questions. I will now open the floor to everyone else. I will now open the floor to everyone else. Let me know. Let me know. 
Any thoughts on that team? Any thoughts? On a scale of 1 to 10, how did I do? Ducks? Ducks are coming. Thank you. The ducks are being... There we go. All right, here we go. I like the rookie room. Jim Money continues to have conversations that we had 40 minutes ago. Thank you, Jason. Seems mid. You know what? You seem mid, bro. Eight, eight. Suck it, Chris. Get out of here, five, seven. Go post your teams. Let's see your five, seven teams. Four, five, get the fuck out of here. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Two out of 10 draft, you are off your rocker. All right, I did successfully tip off the Discord this time. I was getting a lot of hate for not successfully tipping off the draft or uh, the Discord for my second draft, but we're good now. We are good now. If you guys are Best Ball Value Hound YouTube members, you can click the join button. Like I mentioned before, you get access to the Best Ball After Dark shows that I do on Saturday evenings. I stream those live, but you can also always check them out in the archives as well. You'll get access to all of the premium After Dark shows. You can then hop into the Deposit Kingdom Discord. I have a link down below. You sync your YouTube and Discord account. Sounds complicated. It's not. There's instructions in the FAQ of the Discord how to do it. Once you sync that, it will unlock the Best Ball Breakfast premium private channel in there, at which point you can get tipped off when I'm hopping in these drafts. There's actually an alert tag called BBB Draft Alerts. If you hit the pinned messages... You can then find uh, how to react to that. And then anytime that tag gets utilized, you will get a notification. And then you can hop into drafts with me. Um, all right. We were at pick seven. I have not selected Brees Hall yet in the big board. I would like to change that. I would like to change that. I am selecting Brees Hall at pick one seven. I believe, yes, this is my fifth draft. I need to update the ticker. My fifth draft in my first draft selecting a running back in round one there we go all right yes we have a lot who do we have in here we got uh i was inverted watch out for tyler conklin going early we got uh mark uh we got copper uh we got andy we got brendan Let's just have some fun, guys. Let's set aside our differences. Let's set aside the tilt, the rage, the hate. And just all love each other. You got your shout out, Tyler. Everyone gets their shout out. Every little red badge gets their shout out. Even Choco Taco. Even Choco Taco out of the three hole gets his shout out. Even Mike 11688. Even Alan J. Mr. 299. All right, we're on the clock. Nico Collins. I do not believe I have had the honor of selecting Nico Collins in one of these drafts either. Come on down. Brees Hall, Nico Collins, which I believe was, was it week? They played in week 14 last year. I believe that was it. I'm getting 2023 week 14 correlation between Brees Hall and Nico Collins. The only reason I know that is because I believe it was the Jets versus the Texans when we were at the Dog Bowl which was week 14 and Nico Collins had a grown ass man game against that jet secondary. Mark, we are not talking about the tight end. I selected last draft. We're not doing it. We are not doing it. Hey, West coast gem. I might have only have done five drafts, but I'm going to tell you Marv's always been going in the second round, brother. Marvin Harrison is a fixture 
of the second round. He has been since the, the contest opened. What, was there maybe like 12 hours where he wasn't a second round pick? But Marv lives in the second round. Neighbors lives in the third round. Ryan says, Kyron feels like the most thin click in the first two rounds. He was obviously excellent, but so much of his value came from just having every touch. Cosign, go off, King. I completely agree, and I completely can't wait for Kyron to shove it down my throat again. All right, which wide receiver are we going to take here in the third round? It will be one of Jalen Waddell, Mike Evans, who just signed an extension. I loved that report that came out from his agent. I think it was over the weekend, and he's like, Mike Evans wants to play for an incredible quarterback for a shit ton of money on a Super Bowl contender. And I was like, yeah. And I, I want to be Ryan Gosling, Mike. It looks like he settled for a shit ton of money. All right, Keenan Allen, DK Metcalf, or Malik Neighbors. Who are we going to do? Who are we going to do? When I drafted with the Bad Bros last week, John let his homerism get us on DK Metcalf. Let's do Keenan. Let's do Keenan. Yes, yes. Don't worry, guys. My rookie boner is coming. I selected Keenan Allen. We got Brees Hall, Nico Collins, and Keenan Allen. This is the thing, you guys. When you're using Pat's leg up rankings, you got to pick your battles. And it's like, Pat's going to try to get me to draft Keenan Allen now in the third round, or he's going to try to get me to draft Adam Thielen for four straight rounds. I'm going to pick my battles. I'm going to be like, you know what? I'll take Keenan Allen now, bud. I get it. Incredible wide receiver. No question marks other than his age. I get it. Just trust the process. Earns targets year after year. I'm going to win. I'm going to, I'm going to give in to this battle so I can win the Adam Thielen war. You got to pick your battles against these ranks, guys. <laughs> what? What? Are we? Consigliere says Keenan is just Pat's homerism. Is the homerism line you are drawing that Pat, who grew up on the East Coast in Delaware, who doesn't root for any teams, moved to San Diego, where the Chargers once were, and then relocated to Los Angeles. But somehow, because both Keenan and Pat have at different times lived in San Diego, Pat has a greater affinity for Keenan relative to the other similar probabilistic third round bets. Is that your thesis, Consigliere? I'd buy it. All right, we're about to pick in the fourth round. Um, last time we did James Cook. Um, we could do we could do Zay T or Lamar Jackson. Should we do another elite quarterback build? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I I did I have kind of liked the the elite QB stuff. Let's do let's do Lamar. Let's do Lamar. Lamar Jackson, Brees Hall, Nico Collins, Keenan Allen. Zay Flowers, T. Higgins gets snapped up right behind. I need more coffee. That's it, guys. That's the last coffee pour on the March 4th best ball breakfast here on the Pete Overs at live stream channel. Mike B haven't noticed Mike B in the chat just comes in out of nowhere and says, go Bo Nix. Are you saying like you're a Bo Nix fan and you're saying like, go chargers, go Bo Nix. Are you saying go as in select Bo Nix? Please elaborate in your follow-up comment, Mike.
All right, Mark Andrews goes, so I don't get to value hound a Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews stack. But the beauty of selecting Lamar Jackson is Rashad Bateman is always waiting. Rashad Bateman is always there. Hmm. All right. Isaiah Pacheco, CJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson at the top of the queue here. Mark goes Terry McLaurin, five straight wide receivers. I'm going to get my boy Christian Kirk. I'm going to get my boy Christian Kirk. Man, look at how old and dusty this team is. Lamar Jackson, Brees Hall, Nico Collins, Keenan Allen, Christian Kirk. Are you drafting a big board team or a crew to go down to the Sizzler and get the senior citizens discount, Pete? Pete, are you drafting a big board team or a bunch of candidates to purchase some Worthers in a humidifier? Hey, Pete, are you drafting a big board team or a bunch of people who are going to send you a birthday card and tape a piece of gum in it? Hey, Pete. No, I, okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. Andy had to catch the falling knife of Calvin Ridley. Someone had to do it. I love the idea of Chipsy, who for all intents and purposes is like a mid-20-something Philadelphian degenerate. Is that enough of a dox for you, Chipsy? But the, the air quality in Philly is just so dirty that Chipsy... <laughs> <laughs> Gypsy has to have all of these air purifiers in his home. I'd believe it. What's for dinner at 4.30? I think we're having, uh, we made, we made ribs last night and I think I, I think we have some leftovers. So I will, I will be having leftover ribs. Unfortunately, not at 4.30. Although, I think I will be eating dinner increasingly early this week. Going to try to like shift up April's bedtime and nighttime routine in advance of daylight savings time. So we're not in max pain when that flip gets switched. It's honestly insane. Daylight savings time is this weekend. So I had the gal brain idea of inching up her routine. That way we can kind of seamlessly slide into daylight savings time when we spring forward. All right. This team finally is getting young. You're going to let me select Brian Thomas, grown-ass man, junior at picks 66. Let's do it. Let's look at this Brian uh, Thompson Raz chart here. Brian, Why do I say Thompson? Brian Thomas. Get his name right, Peter. Here it is. Brian Thomas, junior, is a wide receiver prospect in the 2024 draft class. He scored an unofficial 9.97 Raz out of a possible 10. This ranked 10th out of 3,063 wide receivers from 1987, the year your humble host, Peter Everzet, was born, to 2024. 6'2", 209, 38.5 vert, 10 feet, 6 inch broad, 4.34, 40 yard dash, Brian Thomas Jr., That's a round one pick right there. Yeah, so the quote from Matt Miller, I wrote this up in the uh, uh, Fantasy Life newsletter this morning. Quote from Matt Miller, I think we could perhaps see a record eight wide receivers drafted in the first round, besting the seven who went in on day one in 2004. God almighty, if we get eight wide receivers in round one. Oh, so good. So good.
All right, we're back on the clock again. What if we, I have not taken many mid-range tight ends. What if we maybe attempt to set up the uh, a Jags thing here, maybe buy the dip on these Jags pieces? Obviously, uncertainty with Zay Jones, Calvin Ridley. Let's lock in the more surefire bets. Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram. We select Ke- uh, Evan Ingram at pick 79. So the squad so far, one one four one. Lamar Jackson at quarterback, Brees Hall, anchor, running back, wide receivers, Nico Collins, Keenan Allen, Christian Kirk, Brian, grown-ass man, Thomas Jr., tight end, Evan Ingram. Yeah, Chipsy, daylight savings time is a scam. I agree with you, but you, you gotta, you can hate, you gotta hate the game, not the player. And I have to play the game of daylight savings time to make sure that my precious baby girl isn't up till 9 p.m. because of this rug. This Consiglier says, I'm getting worried about this year's combine numbers. Everyone was way too elite. I think the trainers figured something out. So Consiglier kind of inferring that these guys are training more intently or specifically for uh, in optimizing for these specific drills, which I think is fair. But again, to me, what we're doing is we are getting out ahead of draft capital movements. And for better or worse, we know that those combine performances are going to impact their draft stock. Xavier Worthy and Brian Thomas and A.D. Mitchell are going earlier in the draft now than they would have had the draft been last week. And because we know draft capital so directly corresponds with year one opportunity, round one picks get way more opportunity than round four picks, than round three picks. And there will be busts, right? There are going to be Quentin Johnsons. But guess what? Quentin Johnson got a lot of fucking opportunities. And so to me, the way I read this bullishness from the combine is there are a lot more of these guys who are going to get earlier opportunities as a rookie than they would have previously. And if that's the case, I'm willing to clackety clack and roll the dice. Because some of these guys are going to be year one difference makers. Some of these guys are going to be eventual superstars. And you gotta crack a few eggs to make an omelet. Just like Javi's willing to do by taking Troy Franklin at pick 85. Man, so we have now reached the gross zone of the draft. I will read you what I'm looking at. For the audio listeners, this is what I see right now. Dak Prescott, Jalen Warren, Jordan Love, Justin Herbert, Jake Ferguson, Austin Eckler, Brock Purdy, Joe Mixon, James Conner, Raheem Moster. It's not until we scroll all the way the F down to Josh Downs that there's a wide receiver in sight. All right, who am I taking here? God, it's just gross name after gross name after gross name. You know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Austin Eckler. We're betting on the olds. I don't know. You know what? I'm Anyone who's going to talk crap about selecting Austin Eckler here, let me show you a video. If you are not able to do this, then you can't talk crap on this pick. For the audio listeners, right now we are watching Austin Eckler do pull-ups with a 100-pound dumbbell wedged between his feet. BTFD. BTFD. And because this stream is already explicit, I can tell you what that means. It means buy the fucking dip. I'm going to go. After this stream, I'm going to go do this. I don't have a 100-pound dumbbell in my garage gym, but I'm going to go attempt this in solidarity. Look at this. We Are you kidding me? First, this guy says I had a mid-team or a 2 out of 10 team. And now you are turned into an Austin Eckler workout video truther. What is wrong with you people? What is wrong? Cut. Let's not. Hey. Hey, stop it. Office patina. This smells like a Zeke draft. Get out of here. Where's the bouncers? Where's the bouncers? Get them out of here.
We're about to pick at 9-7. Pick 9-7. Do, 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 do. You know what I'm doing? I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. We're going back to back. 80 Mitchell, come on down. I'm doing it. Brian Thomas and 80 Mitchell. We are we are drafting grown ass men, rookie wide receivers today. 80 Mitchell's ADP 120. I take him at pick 103. He's a riser, baby. He's a riser. I don't know why I did that like Dick Vitale. I think it's because JGFC, anytime he he drafts a rookie, like 40 picks ahead of ADP, just comes in the chat and says, he's a riser. He's a riser, baby. Look at him get up. He's a diaper dandy. I got to work on my dick Vitale. Here we go. Here we go. Let me do my impression. I was getting 80 Mitchell at pick 130. Even though his ADP now is only 120, I was getting him at the 130s, and you just took him at 102. Get the fuck out of here! Don't piss in my Cheerios. Guess what? I have new information that you didn't have. What's going on with my boom arm here? There we go. He's a riser, baby! Hmm. All right. Um, do, 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 okay, I think I know what I'm going to do here. I think I know what I'm going to do here. See, and Andy's Andy's scooping up all of the uh the veteran guys. Andy, I did the Cortland Sutton thing. Andy takes him at 107. Guess what, Andy? I got him at pick 120. I was getting Cortland Sutton at pick 120 hours ago. All right. What are you going to do, Copper? What are you going to do? I think I'm going to... Are there any wide receivers? Oh, my God. Take your pick, copper. Bleeding down the clock, seeing if I'll tip my hand so you can snipe me. I know what you're about. Honestly, there's so many quarterbacks here. I don't. I can't. I'm taking Xavier Worthy. What are we doing? This guy just ran a 4-2-1. He's going to be a ninth, eighth round pick here in about a week. Hook him horns. Hook him horns. A.D. Mitchell and Xavier Worthy and Brian Thomas. I proved that I watched the combine because I just selected Xavier Worthy at pick 114. This is how you save an AARP team. I am old enough to remember that there were people in the chat who said I was drafting a retirement home. Well, what are they saying now? Because I just selected Brian Thomas Jr., A.D. Mitchell, and Xavier Worthy. What are they saying now? Look at this. Let's all roast Copper for taking Tyler Lockett. I wanted Coleman and wasn't paying attention. Be better, Copper. Be better. Own up to your mistakes. Honestly, I watch you draft Copper, and do you know what I think to myself? Is this guy ready to compete? Is this guy ready to compete in the big board draft right now, or is he too distracted? Many are wondering if Copper Prices is too afraid to compete. Here come the Lad McConkey slappies. Oh, Paul being a Lad McConkey slappy. That is just too perfect. Although pick 120 is a lot better than where he went last draft, which was like pick 96. Chaco Taco, OTC. Mm. 
Chuba Hubbard goes. Hmm. I'll allow this pun, Willis. I'll allow it. He's a good lad, though. I like that. I like that. Yes! Uh, Cole Komet goes. Look, guys. I made the bet. I really wanted to select Trevor Lawrence to complete my Evan Ingram and Christian Kirk double stack. And I said, no, I have to take Xavier Worthy. Want to know why? Because he's a riser, baby. But guess what? Trevor Lawrence comes back. Trust the goddamn process. Where are all the people? I want everyone who panned my last draft. I want you to start calculating how you're going to grade this one. Because we just landed Trevor Lawrence 16 picks past ADP for the double stack. Oh! Lamar Jackson, Trevor Lawrence at quarterback. Running backs, Brees Hall and Austin Eckler. Wide receivers, Nico Collins, Keenan Allen, Christian Kirk, Brian Thomas Jr., A.D. Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, tight end Evan Ingram. Get out your abacuses. Get ready to rank this draft. Smash the like while you're at it. Can't wait to, to not stick the landing. Can't wait to not stick the landing. No. Stay confident, Peter. Trust your abilities. Trust your abilities. Did the kids still say mid? Someone called my draft mid about 30 minutes ago. GA, please. Please. <clears throat> All right. It's time to focus up. Look at this. Look at this just sticking out like a sore thumb. Adam Thielen. Just absolutely disgusting. Who's copper going to accidentally click this time? Sorry, guys. Was it paying attention? Hmm. Hmm. Since this is... Damn it, Copper sniped me. I knew that was going to come back to bite me. Take Zach Charbonnet. Whatever. I'll take... Uh, I'll take McLaughlin again. Because this is no longer a safe for children stream, I feel comfortable reading this comment from Sean F. Smoking a noise. That is that's how it's spelled. N-O-I-C-E. Joint. I believe that is um it's a method of uh inhaling marijuana. Watching you draft while doing a draft is beautiful. Hang on. Smoking a noise joint watching you draft while doing a draft is beautiful. Okay. Chill, brother. Chill, brother. Blow a smoke ring for me, brother. Nova, we're thinking about it, buddy. You better believe we've been thinking about one Mr. Master Bateman. That guy's doing weed. It took me a second to decipher that message. A little wake and bake here. Nah, the only stimulant we need is an electric chat and a little bit of caffeine. Nobody look. Nobody look on the screen right now. I'm just doing a little research. Nobody look on the screen. Nobody look. Nobody look. All right, screw it. I'm taking Isaiah Likely. ADP 165. I don't care. I need to... I, I want to stack Mr. Lamar up. I don't want to feel pigeonholed into taking Rashad Bateman. We're going to take Isaiah Likely to pair with Evan Ingram. ADP is a social construct. Go get your guys. Have fun. Live a little. Trademark David Kitchen, 2023. Chipsy, I have two. I have two. I used to use it as a crutch to fall asleep. 
we've been off the sauce. 2024 is all about self-improvement. We're out here reading books, getting swole, staying off the substances. If you guys want to partake in the P.O. Box, uh, which is my personal newsletter that I do every Friday, um, we got a book club going on. Um, wrote about the uh, the end of the Billy Walters book in this week's edition, and then keep tabs on uh, the books that we're reading right now. Reading The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. Absolutely loving this book. About a third of the way through now. And I thought I was going to ping pong back and forth between some books. Um, but uh, I've been enjoying Devil in the White City so much that I'm just plowing through it. It's about uh, the 18... Or 1893 World's Fair, and it's basically two interwoven stories. The architects who are trying to construct this World's Fair in Chicago, and basically their their North Star is trying to compete with the Paris World's Fair from a few years earlier, where they erected the yes, I said erected the Eiffel Tower, and they're trying to do this in essentially a two year timeline, and then that weaves with H. H. Holmes. Uh, an infamous Chicago serial killer. And the stories are starting to blend together in approach of the World's Fair. Very much enjoying that. Widely available at libraries because it's an older book. So if you want to jump in, we have a P.O. Box, or not a P.O. Box, we have a book club channel in the uh, in the Discord where we can discuss these things. And I am on the clock. I want, I want more worky wide receivers. I want Xavier. I'm taking Xavier. Xavier Leggett, another guy I included a link in today's newsletter for, where is he? Yeah, check out this comp. Want to get excited? Matt Miller, I can't look at Xavier Leggett and not see A.J. Brown from a body type standpoint. Leggett actually ran 0.1 seconds faster in the 40 at 6'1", 221, compared to 6'0", 226. Heard it here confirmed. Xavier is the next A.J. Brown. Anyways, this is the P.O. Box newsletter, free newsletter I do every Friday. I'm going to drop this in the chat. You can subscribe here to the P.O. Box newsletter. I also do a roundup of all my shows, content throughout the week, some other things I'm enjoying. Check it out, the P.O. Box newsletter. Our team here through 14 rounds, Lamar Jackson, Trevor Lawrence. We got three running backs, Brees Hall, Austin Eckler, Jaleel McLaughlin. We have been ripping in rookie wide receivers, started with the AARP room, Nico Collins, Keenan Allen, Christian Kirk, but then went Brian Thomas Jr., A.D. Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, and Xavier Leggett. Double Xavier. This show is all about the X. Xavier Worthy, Xavier Leggett, and then you reverse it for the crotch chop. Shout out Dylan. Tight ends, Evan Ingram and Isaiah Likely. Mm. All right. We are about to pick again. Hmm. Man, Mark took me, took Ray Davis. I was going to take him. Man, there's wide receivers I want to take, but I feel like, uh, de -de 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 -de. you know what? How we, how are the medical bros feeling about Keaton Mitchell these days? Um, I have not selected him yet. Obviously love the talent. Um, because I have this big Ravens bet, um, we're going to go ahead and have him here. Pat has him fourth in his ranks. He has Zach Moss, Miles Sanders, and Izzy uh, Abana Kanda ahead of him. I'm going to go ahead and clackety clack on Keaton Mitchell here. Tyler says he's fine. It's good enough for me. Good enough for me. All right, John James says, I've got two words for you. Are we going to allow this as two words? Scroll the fuck dash down. Are we going to allow that as two words? You're taking a lot of liberties with condensing that to two words, John. Scroll the fuck down. I don't know. Feels like it's more than two words. We got five more picks here. 
We got five more picks. See, this is, um, it does feel better having the anchor RB when you get into these rounds because the, the running back stuff is just so thinned out. I'm probably just going to have to plug my nose and lean into some correlation stuff. What do we think? Is this a two tight end room or a three tight end room? Evan Ingram and Isaiah likely. Two or three tight ends. Man, tight end just sucks. I think at this point we just have... Do we just have to do Bateman? Baker goes. That would have been another fun rookie... I, I just think we just have to do it. This is the year. This is the year for Rashad Bateman. <laughs> we got a 2482. We're going to take one more tight end. Probably two more. We definitely have flexibility here. Um, I think this can be a, a six running back room. Brees, Eckler, McLaughlin, Mitchell. Two more running backs, one more tight end, three. And then we could still do one more wide receiver. Definitely good with two QBs with Lamar and Lawrence. Got them each stacked up with their tight end. So we now have double stacks with Lamar, double stacks with Trevor. We need to select some running backs, though. Evergreen comment. Need to select some running backs, though. If you guys aren't in the Deposit Kingdom Discord yet, you should join us. We got all kinds of channels under the Fantasy Sun. We got premium channels, uh, as I mentioned before, the Best Ball Breakfast. We got the Ship Chasing. We got all of the publicly available Badge Bros channels. There's specific uh, and individual threads for all of the various sports. So if you go in the Badge Bros channel and then check the uh, little threads button up there, you can find ones for hoops, for puck, for baseball. Um, football stays in the main chat there, but, uh, there's golf, everything in there. If you want to start attacking the, uh, underdog daily slates, we got the book club channel that I mentioned earlier. We got channels for various shows, splash play channels in there, swole cast channels in there, hop in the deposit kingdom discord and join us. Continue the conversation. Even when the stream is over, continue the conversation in the Deposit Kingdom Discord. I can't I can't just keep selecting Dylan Loeb in every goddamn draft. I think it's time to, to scroll down a little bit here. What are our tight end options? You know what? Tucker Craft. Let's, let's grab Tucker Craft as our third tight end. I do like him. Um, and then I don't have to take a, a true dust ball. Take Tucker Craft there. And now we are we are most likely done at the onesies. Man. Man. I might have to take... Dust ball. I might have to take some dust ball running backs. Yep, I agree. Tyler says Tucker underpriced, ambiguous tight end room. Both played well and up tempo pass game. Yeah, we just don't have a big enough sample size of Kraft and Musgrave playing together, I think, to definitively say who is going to be the lead dog there. You get the ambiguity. You get the contingent upside if one of them gets hurt. Ascending offense, young QB. I like it. I like the bet. 
Seems like a perfect tight end three in big board drafts. All right, I'm, I'm going to make a gross running back pick here. I mean, I guess you could argue there's no uh, such thing as ungross, non-gross running back picks, but we're gonna we we built out our Baltimore bet, and I think we're gonna do our Jags bet. We're just gonna we're gonna plug our nose. I hate it, I hate it, but we're gonna select Tank Bigsby. You know, one of the things I do in general want to do with these big board drafts. Um, is really lean into some of the team level correlation stuff since we don't have enough information to correlate beyond that. So big bets on Baltimore, big bets on the Jags, Tank Bigsby, ugh, but we did it. Our running backs now, Brees Hall, Austin Eckler, Jaleel McLaughlin, Keaton Mitchell, and Tank Bigsby. So basically our, our kind of our bets on these two teams are mirrored. We have a quarterback, a running back, a wide receiver, and a tight end from both the Ravens and the Jags. And now we have two more picks. Two more picks with a 2583 build. I think the last pick I definitely have flexibility on. I think I, I certainly want to get a sixth running back, but I think I could almost make a case. I, I don't think I'd go four tight ends, but I think you could make a case for just about any other selection positionally here. What do you guys think? How do you think I should spend my 20th pick with the assumption I am going to go running back at least for a sixth there? Any thoughts? Any comments? Yeah, I don't think I'm going onesie. No quarterback, no tight end. We're probably running backs and wide receivers here. You know what we could do? I mean, I think another running back, I could just double up. Um, again, this is like, I think the, you know, the sliding scale of, you know, how to think about how you're drafting like a week before the season starts. And that's when you're avoiding handcuffs, multiple stuff uh, from the same backfield as much as possible. But this actually feels like a spot where the Keaton and I, I liked what I saw from Justice Hill and just continue to rip it in on Baltimore here. So I'm going to select Justice Hill as my sixth running back. Feel like that could be a spot where you kind of middle it. You know, maybe Justice Hill is the guy at the beginning of the year. Keaton Mitchell comes on at the end of the year. I mean, it was essentially what that was in reverse this year, where it was Keaton was really coming on mid to late season. And then Justice Hill obviously had to take over when Keaton Mitchell tore his ACL. But I kind of like that pairing relative to Keaton Mitchell's return timeline. Marquee, Marquee Music Group. The Marquee Music Group has logged on and said no Hill. Sorry, brother. John James really pushing for a fourth tight end. I don't know, man. I, I feel like Evan Ingram, Isaiah Likely, Tucker Craft. I mean, if... If there was value at the tight end position, I'd have no problem doing it. I mean, I guess these names are somewhat palatable. I know nothing about Aeneas Smith. Anyone know anything about this individual? Odell, do we just go full-blown? Or Parker Washington. Parker Washington was actually kind of fun. He's another guy who could be a big beneficiary of, you know, if like, if Zay walks, if Calvin walks, I mean, what, Parker Washington could be out there and it's not crazy to think he could be out there in three wide receiver sets, right? This is me talking myself into Parker Washington. All right, I just landed the plane. John says, I don't like likely virtually zeros in fantasy games Andrew plays. I think that's completely fair, but that's not the game we're playing. Um, I think if you want to have that take in um, like a 12-person uh, draft 
completely makes sense. But we are trying to beat what is going to be 223,000 entrants for a $200,000 top prize. And this exact thesis played out last year. The exact thesis of like, you can't take likely because he's not going to produce with Mark Andrews is on the field. That's completely correct. That is exactly what happened. But then guess what? Mark Andrews got hurt and Isaiah likely was a league winner and on a ton of advancing best ball teams throughout the playoff gauntlet. So those are the exact kind of asymmetric bets we want to take. Yes, most of the time, Mark Andrews will stay healthy and Isaiah likely will not be um, an impact player in best ball. I agree with that thesis. But guess what? As my friend Davis Maddox says, most of the time we're going to fucking lose anyways. So if you think about Isaiah likely in the same way you think about a handcuff running back, in most scenarios, Izzy Abanacanda is not going to do anything helpful for your fantasy team because Brees Hall is going to scorch the earth and finishes the RB1. But, but if he gets hurt and Izzy's the RB2, well, guess what? Now you just landed on an asymmetric bet who could be a top 10 back while Brees Hall was out. In the same way, Isaiah likely can be a top five tight end when Mark Andrews is out. So in these top heavy tournaments, I'm always willing to make those bets. The key is, I think at the tight end position and why Isaiah likely is so unique is it does have to be a talent-based bet at tight end if you're playing that handcuff angle. At running back, it doesn't necessarily have to be, right? Because it's so driven by opportunity and volume. But if you're going to do that move at tight end and what? I, I mean, can we come up with a couple? I guess we just did the Tucker Craft one. But if you're going to select a tight end too, you do want them to be very talented so that they can take advantage of that opportunity. And I would argue Isaiah likely has proven both at the end of his rookie year and last year that he can take advantage of those opportunities. So I have no problem with Isaiah likely as a late round selection. And again, to your point, I do feel better about Isaiah likely as part of two uh, or as, as a part of three tight end rooms, right? Where, yeah, if you are getting a zero for a lot of the year, just having an anchor tight end, maybe you could do Isaiah likely with um, really early guys, Laporta, likely McBride. But with Evan Ingram, maybe asking a little too much of Evan Ingram to fully carry this team. So then we go three tight ends. So now I kind of like this because we have kind of two various uh, ambiguous situations with likely and Kraft and then Ingram and then just hope at different times of the year they are contributing. All right, so let me name this team. And then we will recap my fifth big board draft here on 3-4. Do, 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 do. What do we have? Best ball breakfast, 2-6-9-3. Baltimore hand. Man. Can't fit it in. Ball, ja ball jacks? Ball jacks is pretty good. Um, ball ja? That'll be fun to click back and try to figure out what I meant by Balja. Balja. All right, this is the team. Lamar Jackson, Trevor Lawrence at quarterback, running backs, Brees Hall, Austin Eckler, Jaleel McLaughlin, Keaton Mitchell, Tank Bigsby, and Justice Hill. Wide receiver, Nico Collins, Keenan Allen, Christian Kirk, Brian Thomas Jr., A.D. Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, Xavier Leggett, Rashad Bateman, Parker Washington, tight end, Evan Ingram, Isaiah Likely, Tucker Craft. I do legitimately like this team. Probably my favorite team I've drafted in that it accomplishes a lot of the goals that I want to do in early drafts, which is make big correlated team bets because that's one of the few things we know these teams and these players are going to be playing together uh, in Baltimore and Jacksonville, uh, taking advantage of the rookie wide receiver risers. We had four here from pick 66 to 162. Brian Thomas, A.D. Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, Xavier Leggett should get some nice closing line value um, on at least these top three. Actually, probably closing line value on all four. And then using the late dart throws to just round out correlation bets there. Bateman, Parker Washington. Yeah, so I don't mind that team. Let me know in the comments here what you guys think of this team. My fifth draft, I am obviously still getting my bearings. Many of you are way ahead of me in the draft curve. Um, so let me know your guys' thoughts. And uh, yeah, we will be here every Monday. Uh, I got to touch base uh, for the rest of my show schedule this week. Uh, we took uh, the past couple weeks off with ship chasing. We should be back this week. All of that good stuff. Uh, will No Swolecast this week, but I'll be live with the Badge Bros on Wednesday. You can always get updates on my shows and what I'm up to on my Twitter 
uh, at Peter Overzet, and I'll give you guys uh, links out to when shows are going live, all of that good stuff. So thank you again for hanging out here on your Monday morning for Best Ball Breakfast. Go ahead, hit that like and the subscribe on your way out if you are new, and we'll see you guys next time on Best Ball Breakfast.